Yeah, BU2 PAA. I apologize. I thought you signed with them. I had a little bit of uh, QR Nancy, QR Mary this way. Uh, good morning from uh, just north of Miami, Florida. Name here is Tom uh, Tango Oscar Mike, and again the call is November one, Fox Mexico. Over. Okay, Tom, uh, beautiful copy, and great audio. All the way from uh, sunny Florida. So that you have a stack of uh, either the Delare or uh, the Barrister or uh, at least the other least maybe the W two I try. I don't know, <laughs> but it definitely sounds pretty good there. N1FM, uh, VU2PAI. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, VU2PAI. No, nothing nothing real elaborate. I do have an ICOM 7800, and that goes into an AL1500 running about uh, 1,000 watts. Uh, for audio gear, I do run the uh, W2IHY EQ Plus and the Ape Ender and a high LPR40 into the back of the 7800, and then the antenna is a 10-element log pointed your way there. Uh, uh, and I missed the first name there. Over. Tom, the name is Pi, Papa Alpha India. Uh, Pi is the name, and uh, I'm sure everybody knows that audio because uh, I have the same equipment here, although I'm not using it at the moment. I do have the IHY and the EQ Plus, and uh, the microphone I have to be the PR781 uh, by Hiles, and uh, I remember the audio on the uh, IHY when I hear one. Of course, the Valaris and the other ones are. Uh, uh, the guys are from my end audio, but uh, I, I can live with the ISY and uh, it really sounds very good uh, at um, In fact, I didn't use that uh, Julius uh, back in uh, my story. Uh, I think it's a very fond the ISY. That's the expensive stuff, but I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, and I realize that it's uh, worth the week. Uh, N1FM, uh, we use the ISY. Yeah, very good. VU2 PAI, uh, beautiful job from India, from Norway 1, Fox, Mexico. And, uh, uh, well, uh, thank you for the compliments. You're sounding good as well. Your audio is really carrying the signal. Uh, I'm going to give you a 5.9 uh, because if I close my eyes, uh, uh, you know, you sound like you're in the room with me. Just a, a nice job. Uh, and i got a little bit of uh, 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 adjacent channel stuff coming in, and I've got a noise blinker on at the same time, and I'm still able to pull you out. Uh, with the 7800, and uh, and I've been real happy with the EQ Plus and the Ape Bander. It does a super job. I, I didn't want to, I used to have some Behringer equipment and uh, uh, other stuff going on, but I elected to uh, uh, just go with the IHY. I had no RF, uh, no, no energy getting back into the microphone, and it seems to work. In fact, today I just ordered the, uh, the, the, the iBox that goes with it, so I'll be able to run my Kenwood uh, 2000 and uh, uh, some of the other equipment over onto the same audio equipment uh, without worrying about any ground loops and speaker system and uh, relay amps and all that. So I ordered that box today. I should have it next week. They're over. Thank you for those, Eric. <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to do that as well. Uh, I'm going to be shifting to a new house, and uh, I think I'm going to have to make it next station here uh, uh, I'm running the PC at the moment, uh, Tom. Uh, running about uh, 600 watts uh, into a more element Yagi uh, by set IR. Uh, running the high list to 5, but the headset uh, 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 coming up to uh, 7, uh, 7.30, so 8 o'clock in the morning, right here at the uh, west coast of uh, South India, overcast and uh, rainy rain, and it uh, uh, looks like the forecast is going to be more rain. Uh, N1FM, uh, BU2PAI, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, BU2PAI from Norway 1, Fox Mike, very good pie. Um, yeah, it has, uh, we were in a drought here, and so we, we live in a very tropical climate here. Uh, typically, we run 100% humidity. It's been about, I'm not sure if you use the English or the metric system uh, for your, your uh, uh, temperature measurement, if, if it's Celsius. It's been running about 34 degrees, and then uh, and during the, the drought, when we had the worst drought in, the, in a 100-year history here, and then now for the past week, it has rained every single day. And I have a swimming pool in the backyard, and today I was uh, hooking up a hose to 
to clean out some of the bottom of the uh, debris in the pool and a lightning bolt. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I was near the tower as well. It struck about two houses down and uh, just uh, scared the you-know-what out of me there, Pi. It, uh, it was, uh, you know, and I had my hand, uh, my arm inside the swimming pool hooking up a hose. And uh, and the swimming water in the pool has been running about 32 degrees uh, Celsius as well. So it's been very, very warm here, and it looks like it's going to be a very hot summer for us. And uh, uh, so that's okay, We uh, but we need the rain, so I can't complain too much. I don't get to swim in the pool as much uh, when it's raining because it's uh, the lightning capital of the world here. There's more people killed uh, right here in this city in Palm Beach where I live than any place in the world for lightning. So uh, and, and it's because of the golfers, and they have the steel cleats, and they get out there with their nine irons and hold them up in the air. So anyway, uh, back to you, VU2PAI from Norway 1, Fox, Mexico. Over. I'll tell you what, man, that's not a pretty picture at all. Of course, we do get a lot of rain here as well, and uh, once in a while, uh, you have a lightning strike happening. Uh, and it's not a pretty picture, Rod, uh, but it's, it's, you know, like I said, it's not funny at all. Uh, I appreciate you around there, and uh, uh, actually, I, I, I didn't see a, uh, no, a tree go up uh, when we were small kids. Uh, we were uh, sitting out in the uh, a veranda. We had a small veranda and a small uh, swing. All the kids were sitting on the swing, and uh, we were watching the rain. And we saw a lightning actually take out a coconut tree. And the coconut tree just went up in smoke. We just had a thick uh, standing there. Like you see the cartoon characters, you know, the cartoon movies. This thing just blew up, man, and all that is standing was like a toothpick. Okay? Well, I, yeah, in fact, I was talking to a ham uh, earlier today. He had a, uh, a pie, he, had a, he got a direct hit, uh, same storm that went through here. And typically, uh, when our storms and the cumulonimbus clouds uh, roll through, Pi, what happens is we get about a thousand lightning strikes an hour just in this community in this area. That's how uh, that's how dangerous it is. And so I've been hit three times. And uh, but but my neighbor that's about uh, oh five kilometers away, uh, it, it hit his ten meter antenna, totally disintegrated it, and all his equipment was hooked up, and it it did it. it, it he was grounded to the lake out in his backyard. He had a ground wire, and he suspects that that's where the energy went and went out to the lake and did not come into the house. It just struck, it disintegrated, completely blew up his 10-meter antenna. It was a fiberglass antenna. Blew it up, uh, pieces of fiberglass all over the yard, and uh, but uh, nothing, no damage to his radio equipment. He's got a beautiful station, beautiful uh, ICOM equipment and amplifiers, and nothing got hurt inside the house there. Over. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh a lifesaver there, and uh, that's the reason why I picked up uh, a couple of the uh, lightning arresters when I came back last night. I'm going to be putting up a top of uh, uh, where we're running the, uh, what's it called, the small tube like thing that I tried to, uh, let me collect the name, but I'm not getting it to the back of my head. I'm going to mouth those in the plate and uh, ground it. We're running the cable into my track there, it's like that. Yeah, very good. VU two PAI from Norway one Fox Mike. Well, yeah, it's uh, you know, I've done everything I can do. I've I've got. Uh, they say I'm overgrounded, but I don't know. Everybody's got their recipe. Uh, they got their own cookbook when it comes to grounding and different paths. And everybody's an engineer that I talk to. And all I know is that on my tower, it's up about uh, one wavelength, 20 meters. It's a it's a crank up tower. And uh, each leg that uh, goes down in the concrete also has an eight-foot ground rod. And then I've got a ground wire from the tower that runs, uh, oh, I don't know, about uh, about 10 meters to a uh, to a well. And that well is a metal pipe that goes about 128 feet into the ground. I'm sorry, I'm using uh, feet and uh, uh, metric. I'm not sure which one you use over there, but that goes 120 feet into the ground. Uh, into the aquifer, so I'm grounded into the well. So I, I you know, I, I think that helps me. Uh, some people will say no. Some, you know, you get everybody arguing, and everybody's an engineer. Over. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There, that's a good sound. And then we do a bit of uh, both, actually. We do a bit of both. Uh, 